Fire Squad cast um, with, you know, these graciously amazing, glorious, beautiful people. Uh, we got Caboose, we got Steven, <laughs> we got Malik. I almost lost myself there. I was like, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? How are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, that obviously, an introduction, by the way, you, oh, dude, introduction. you <laughs> are welcome. Yeah, I, great I, I always try to bring the energy. Um, do I always keep it? I like to hope so. I like to hope so. <laughs> and when I don't, I feel like you guys kind of keep it for me. So we pass the baton. Exactly. And, and that's all it's all about. Just passing exactly. the baton. Um, now baton. before exactly. we get everybody exactly. in, um, why don't we just, uh, talk about our weekend? What have you guys been up to? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Guys, it wasn't that hard of a question. Okay, I'll tell you what. I did nothing, but but I just recently, for the first time ever, watched the Hunger Games movies. Wait, with my and, and, and the first one was like it was pretty good, um, but then we watched Catching Fire, and I was like, okay, I'm hooked. Really? Like, oh my okay. god! Like this is amazing. We're gonna finish Mockingjay Part Two sometime. I don't know when. But it's good. I've been You're missing in. out. I've been missing out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good though. Good one. Wait, it took you, you this know, long? And I kept saying when I was watching, although like Battle Royale is a genre, is now a genre, but like right. why has Hunger Games not been a game? You know, like it. I oh, feel sure. like it writes yeah. itself. You yeah. know. <laughs> so, it really I does. I don't know. Well, I weird. moved, got into a new office space, so still setting it up, but you know was busy doing that this weekend i did nothing i mean it's that <laughs> lockdown life you know <laughs> what are you gonna do i like how like caboose and uh malik were just all like we did this we we had you know pretty fairly productive uh you know weekend seems like i did nothing absolutely <laughs> nothing. nothing it was a write-off i mean it was a complete fair, write-off. i don't know if watching a bunch of movies is necessarily productive but like you know. You know, i will that it is yeah thank yeah. you malik as well Ooh. as we all have a must you know must watch or must playlist that we never get to literally like we have all the time in the world right now i feel like after this lockdown there are no excuses if you haven't Absolutely. got to that list just you know just pry it open just a little bit um in order to really enjoy yourself and feel productive for myself what did i i i walked I got outside. It was a little sunny. Right. I went on a little walk um, and then <laughs> I ate a lot. I had like half a cake um, nice. because of the walk. Oreo. Ooh, Ooh. great choice. Okay. okay. It, nice. It is. It is. It's my number one cake. That and a Dairy Queen cake. You know, my birthday's coming up. Anyone wants oh. to mail me a Dairy Queen cake? I don't know how that will work, but... I'm up for GQ. it. You're gonna get a I'll mail you. Mess. <laughs> I'll mail you a Dairy Queen cake, and, and the writing on top will say "Death Stranding sucks." You know what? I'll take it because it's Dairy Queen, but I'll just smudge <laughs> off the lettering. It doesn't even okay. matter anymore. It was nice that you said or, that you were gonna send a cake. I was gonna say coupons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that makes more oh, sense man. because I I don't think Aaron really thought through how he will send that cake. Right, um, just in an envelope. You gotta, you gotta walk <laughs> it. Just no packaging. <laughs> We'll it's figure just it out. We'll slimy it out. when you pull it out of I'll the mail. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't even do express. He just does standard post. Yeah, it'll get to you in like two to three business days. Don't yeah. worry. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. all good. It's fine. It's fine. And you know what's going to be fine? Our conversations today, because it is a packed one. We're going to be talking the Resident Evil Showcase, Nintendo's Indie World, Bioshock 4 rumors, um, and Spider-Man Miles Morales, the sales, and what can we expect or when we could expect Spider-Man 2. So mm. now that you know your topics, get the fingers ready to do the typing and chat because we want to hear your thoughts. But let's get started with Steve. You got all the latest from the Resident Evil Showcase. Tell us what's up. That's right. Uh, yeah, on April 25th, Capcom released its second Resident Evil showcase, once again, highlighting the upcoming Resident Evil Village, as well as other projects under the franchise's umbrella, pun. You know? ah, I see what you did there. Nice I see pun. what you did there. Nice pun, you know? Okay. Uh, yeah, in the showcase, we got uh, a little look at some new gameplay, some cinematics of the game. Uh, but the biggest announcement 
in regards to Resident Evil Village was the, this new batch of demos that are being released. Um, the way that Capcom chose to announce this and, you know, release these demos are a bit convoluted, but, you know, strap in because I'll, I'll give you the lowdown here. <laughs> Just try to follow along because it was it was kind of rough. Uh, so <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're releasing a two segment demo, one comprised of the village segment and another of the castle portion. And it will release on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series and Stadia starting on May 1st. Players will have eight an eight hour window to explore both locations, though only 30 minutes is given to each portion, totaling an hour of gameplay. Uh, the demo will be available in North America May 1st with Europe and Asia May 2nd. Um, on top of that, PlayStation 5 owners get early access to each demo. The Village portion was already available this past weekend, so if you missed out, um, you got to wait for May 1st. Uh, the cap <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, and myself too, to be honest, because I was like, I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Um, the Castle portion will be available this coming Saturday on April 24th. Uh, but if you're like me and your head was spinning trying to figure out all this and like the times, because they, they broke it down to very specific times that you could access these days, uh, Capcom has an entire breakdown on their socials that you can refer to. Truth be told, like you see these like uh, these t time breakdowns where they're like, this is the worldwide launch. So North America is this, Europe is that, and Asia is this, and all that. I've seen that for, you know, proper launches of a game not a demo like, I, I don't know why capcom <laughs> decided to go down this way they're like oh because it's resident evil 8 we'll give you an eight hour window that's cute i guess i it feels almost like they don't want people to get <laughs> yeah <laughs> like what is this they're like yo we're giving you something but good luck trying to get access to it right the time like it's it's weird but i guess it's working if it's a marketing sure. scheme it's working but if it's if it's supposed to be a fan service it's not working. yeah mm. yeah i guess there is like a level of exclusivity to it to be like okay you have to be at your console at this time if yeah. you want to participate in this otherwise you kind of miss out yeah um i mean so in that regard i guess i guess it's cool but i don't know I, for I don't me know. it's like an, an eight hour window like I get that eight. I get that eight hours is a lot of time right. to some people, but and and I mean you know, COVID season, so eight hours Everyone's is home. a lot, a lot of yeah. time. Um, but like I don't know, you know, usually you look at something like a beta or a demo, and they give you a weekend, right? Yeah, maybe exactly. You're not available on this specific day. Maybe you can't, you know, sit yourself down for eight hours to play a game on on another day, right? You just it, it's just weird the way they have split up this demo. Because when I was asking you about it, Steve, before we went live. I wanted to try the demo. I can't now. <laughs> and the second part of the demo comes out later. I think this next weekend, yeah. but I'm not going to know what's going on because I didn't play the first part. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to have to wait until May 1st to be able to know what the hell is going on. Sure. At and least like a different system could have just been like each weekend, the demo comes back to play, you know, sure. if you wanted to just give limited time. Well, I yeah. think the weirdest thing about this whole thing is the fact that you could still play <laughs> the first demo for the PlayStation mm -hmm. 5, uh -huh. um, that exclusive demo. So it's like, they really thought this up in the middle of their marketing. They're like, okay, I know we released that first demo. We're gonna leave it out there, but yep. I got something cool, Resident Evil 8. I mean, eight <laughs> hours. Right. Yeah, uh, you know it just doesn't make sense. Um, and I guess on like a base level, I can understand their thought process of being like, okay, we're ramping up to Resident Evil Eight or Resident Evil Villages launch. So every single weekend, we're going to give players something to do and something to play to get them hyped right. up. That yeah, makes right. sense. But again, the eight-hour window part is the only piece that I'm like, why though? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, for me personally, I'm staying away from everything involving like i am i'm waiting till the game comes out sure. i don't want to look at anything i don't want to touch anything mm -hmm. but at the same time like i i, I want to know and the fact that i can't even if i wanted to like get the experience or figure it out or like you know just be able to try and get into the demo i i can't and that's kind of frustrating too because mm -hmm. that option isn't even there for a lot of people and i mean the weird part is that even with Call of Duty, right, they announce if they've got a free weekend or, you know, if there's a new Call of Duty coming out, you can play it for this weekend, you know, get your pre-download, whatever. Why wouldn't they announce it and then, you know, open it up next weekend and not do part one now and then part two next or like just 
like Kabu said, let you play each of them like for a couple select weekend. Yeah. yeah. Or even just one weekend, even if you're like, yo, all of the gameplay demos that we have, all the demos, everything available for this weekend, this yep. one day even, even if you just do one day, that's fine. But give us a heads up. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. a little frustrating. It's, it's a little weird. weird. Like, I understand that there's still excitement and a lot of people are looking forward to it. Some for weirder reasons than others. But like... You know, it's still, uh, it's, it's still, you know, it's, it's still just, it's a little weird for, for someone like myself who maybe didn't have the opportunity or the chance to just sit down and play. Now I'm going to have to wait like an extra two weeks if mm -hmm. I want to know kind of what the full demo was like. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm kind of on board with um, Malik here. So I, I talked a little bit about this and I'll just mention it quickly. I wasn't able to fully play through the PlayStation 5 exclusive because I was too scared. Um, usually when I play Resident Evil, I play with a group of friends. It's a whole like set of weekends. We all just meet at someone's house and we play through, we take turns and it's like a social event for us. Obviously, times are different. We can't do that. Um, but I've been too scared and all the trailers I've been seeing through my eyes being covered um have pretty much showed me a lot like a lot yeah um and i feel like i'm kind of worried with <laughs> resident evil 8 because i feel like they're kind of fast and the furious nining this like in the sense they're showing too much in each trailer where i'm wondering where the surprise will be right i i, I feel that yeah i don't i see to counter that though I think that there's a bigger surprise and a bigger twist that nobody knows about. Mm. That's why they're so confident in giving up all this information because they know that Resident Evil fans pick apart everything uh -huh. to put it together. I think that there's a twist that they're not telling anybody and not showing that is just going to like be completely opposite of the expectations that the demo set. Mm. There, it has to be. It has to be. Otherwise, I think so. Because... It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Previous Resident Evils, we haven't gotten this much information and coverage on them. Not in really. Years. Yeah. It's like here's one trailer, and then the game is up. Uh, we don't talk about Raccoon City. Still need to talk about. It. <laughs> but uh, also, too, I wanted to mention, like before, like we move on from the Resident Evil, the Infinite Darkness. Uh, I'm right. really excited for that animated show. Um, I don't know oh. if you were gonna get there, yeah. Steve. Yeah. But, like that's exciting for me. Yeah, I was gonna uh, briefly mention it that uh, they. At least the first trailer for uh, what is Netflix's animated series, uh, Infinite Darkness. Um, it follows directly right after Resident Evil 4, which is cool because that's a beloved oh. game. So just continuing that story. Um, it's set in the White House where it's on, like, you know, the outbreak uh, and the outbreak happens. And I, I really dig the animated style of this. Yeah. Um, it's More like a video one. game. It's a, okay. It's like, okay. That's cool. You're gonna, if you're looking at this as a gaming fan, yes, I, yeah. I dig <laughs> the animation. If you're looking at this from someone who's scrolling Netflix and like maybe watch Castlevania or watch sure. other animes and you're like, oh, Res Evil, I know that. I've heard of that franchise. Let me click on this. You're going to be like, what the heck video game cutscene is this? Because that's how yes. they made the animation style yes. look. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's exactly what I was just about to say. Because how many times, I don't know if you guys have, have always thought this, I've always thought this, and I know I, I've seen people say the same in like YouTube comments, but you'll see like a cutscene for a game back when there were pre-rendered cutscenes, and mm -hmm. everyone would be like, oh man, I want a whole movie of that. Right. You know? <laughs> or like the, the, the content creators on YouTube who compile all cutscenes from a game and just upload that as like a movie version of the game. Yeah. I love that stuff. So hell yeah, I'm, I agree with you, Steve. I am all in on the animation style for this series. I, I can't wait to check it out. And yeah. the, the concept, all you you had me at it continues from Resident Evil Four. That's yeah. all I needed. And oh, I man. feel I feel like they've done a movie like this before, um, multiple times. Um, yeah. But you know, I feel like a lot of Resident Evil fans are still going to watch this because we keep watching the same stuff and we love it every single That's time. Right. Especially so when they go to those movies. Have we watched <laughs> exactly <laughs> right? And it's like when they go to those classic characters, you're just hitting on the nostalgia points, you know. So I know everyone's going to watch this. I just hope that they broaden that story a bit. Um, and. Sure. Back to Resident Evil, like, just because I'm so curious about how they're going to keep the surprise element of it. Maybe, you know, how they're diving deeper into Umbrella's, you know, place in all of this, because they kind of teased that in seven. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't really get everything. So maybe that's that's all I'm going to add there. 
Yeah. And Umbrella, I, I want to say too, in Resident Evil and honestly in most of gaming, Umbrella is one of the most complex, like, evil organizations. Sure. Because in gaming, we get a lot of generic corporations that don't have a lot of motives but umbrella is really interesting in the fact that like you have all these separate leaders and like these separate heads that were doing different projects and working on different things and every time we get a new game it just digs deeper into these levels of like what was actually going on with umbrella what was their overall goal because i don't think we really have a great idea of no. what they were even trying to accomplish in the first place mm -hmm. i think it shifts like between each game like it, it kind of adapts to whatever the focal point is of that game that's kind of what umbrella's ultimate goal is is to whether or not work against or for the overarching threat um but i i agree i think umbrella is just such a fascinating corporation or mm -hmm. entity in the in the franchise and every time yeah. we get like a little bit more a little bit of that, i am <laughs> i just want that extra bit more i just want them uh, to link it especially with how they've kind sure. of did a soft reboot of the franchise going back to more of the horror roots of things yeah. um especially now you have werewolves and well likings and vampires and stuff like that so it's how are they going to connect that if they are to mm -hmm. that main storyline i think that's going to be um interesting and we just can't connect that with one character if we don't know why the character's there You're and, and about, what's yeah what's yeah, really with, happening uh, chris yeah chris, yeah yeah, because I was going to say that was kind of like the connective tissue that they introduced in the first or not the first game in Resident Evil 7. Um, and you're right that is, it's not enough. There needs to be more of a reason like why he's there, how he got there, what yep. he's doing there, you know, um, and like he kind of is is played as an antagonist almost. Mm -hmm. in yeah. Some of the things that he's doing, which is interesting. I mean, color me intrigued. That's that's all I'll say. Like Resident Evil Seven had me hooked, yeah. from beginning to end. It scratched that PT itch, um, and it seems like Resident Evil Eight now is taking all the good stuff that they did with the remakes. Like for instance, you know, having I can't pronounce the name, but you know, the the tall lady that everyone's in love with, <laughs> having the her lady like Jim Crescue, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Crescue, Jimmy yeah. Yeah. Jimmy yeah. having her like chasing whatever, you yeah. around the whole yeah. time in the game, uh, as if anyone would be afraid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, and then and then also just incorporating the first person elements that we got from Resident Evil Seven. I think it's just it's a mashup of the best of both worlds that we've gotten from recent Resident Evil games. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited. Yeah, uh, Camille, I got a question for you. Yeah. All right, Resident evil for vr is that is that gonna be too much i already see you shaking your head when they did seven vr i was like how are people like cases of people having heart attacks should have skyrocketed that year because i don't know how you could get through that um and still breathe normally like that's just too scary for me i don't think i'll ever do a resident evil um vr i couldn't do um what was it oh my gosh the clowns um rush of oh my god blood. Rush of blood yes i couldn't even do that so no nothing resident evil vr but i mean there's people out there that like to really crap their pants um and be scared so there you go, Steve. That's yeah, that's indeed. specifically for you. Um, but was there anything else in the showcase that was kind of like, ooh, big news? Not really. I mean, Malik, you kind of talked about Resident Evil 4 VR, which to me was a huge letdown. When you say Resident Evil 4, that yeah. immediately brings up, you know, oh, are we getting a remake? Yeah. No, it's for Oculus 2 or Oculus Quest 2. That that was just kind of like a wah wah at the end of the, the showcase. So mm -hmm. <laughs> to me, I'm just I'm just waiting for the like the proper one, because as we know, it is in development. All signs point to that. So that's what I'm really holding out hope for is to see that. Yeah, I think in general. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Malik. Go ahead. I was just going to say uh, the Dead by Daylight collaboration, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, that yeah. Felt like that should have happened. Already. Well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, wrong. It's, it's exciting and it's cool. But I'm like, why wasn't this done sooner with how much D by Daylight? dvd like it reaches out and gets those partnerships it yeah. feels like this already should have happened it's cool and it's more fan service but it's not something i would really be super excited for sure well it was funny because the last time they had a showcase and we talked about it on the show they they, they brought up this collaboration with the division two and all of us were like why <laughs> that's, so kind of, that's kind of strange like maybe yeah there's a virus in division i guess it's third person action sure throw in some cosmetics in there but this one this collaboration makes a whole lot of sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, and i mean as well like you look at dead by daylight now what an impressive game it yeah. is i i was there at pax east i can't remember what year when that game was first coming out mm -hmm. and it was this tiny little booth 
and these people from Montreal talking about this concept that they had for a game. And it was super cool. Now they got they got Mike Myers in there. I think they got Freddy Krueger. They got pyramid, they got head. Much pyramid head. You yeah. know, like they got what, like Jigsaw, a bunch of stuff from Saw, Stranger Things. They have just a whole library of properties that they've reached out to and gotten for the game. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 Other than that, they they just announced uh, the last thing that I, I want to point out is that they're bringing back Mercenaries mode, which longtime yeah. Resident Evil fans are. are obviously really stoked for it. it's like the more arcadey version of the game where they can yeah. go through and just like get high scores and it's more fast paced which is really cool that's cool uh, yeah just another supplemental uh addition on yeah. top of like re verse that uh that multiplayer game that you know they're trying to put out <laughs> they're trying what yeah, a mess I, I, I was gonna say too can we just appreciate that games like dead by daylight came from evolve sure yeah yeah Yeah. like that game i wanted it to be good so bad me too but i'm glad that it failed for the reason of other people saw like what not to do because otherwise Mm. we would have gotten six games just like if it would have failed evolve walked so dead by daylight could run you know and then back for blood could sprint Sprint, yeah hopefully yeah Yeah. for blood but i i i beg the question you know Mm -hmm. there was really just Resident Evil 8 news um, that we all kind of felt out through the demo as well. Um, when you're looking at, or if you played the demo, you cut, you could kind of feel out what you could expect from that game. Yeah. So are these RE showcases even worth it for Capcom anymore? Or are they just better off just releasing a trailer? SEO, mm. yes. These, the, <laughs> for, I, I, I hate to like put it in that aspect, but for SEO and marketing, um, and just being online in general and having that presence, uh, you know, you're, you want the articles about their yep. showcase, right? Because if yeah. you put out a trailer, there's only going to be so much that people talk about it. Um, but if you call it a showcase, you have a big event for it and yeah. you, say you have a special, yeah. you know, you have something planned. Also, too, I was really, really disappointed because you don't tell Resident Evil fans that you have a big surprise for them and then give them mediocre surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then like for the fact of like hey we have a demo but you can only play it within this eight hour span it's yeah it's that thing of like they just wanted they were going for the buzzwords they were going for yeah like, that online yeah. presence and it and it, it kind of sits in your stomach like a rock but you're like i guess like this is kind of gaming recently yeah i i couldn't agree more malik i think they're doing it just because of the marketing just because it builds that hype but at the end of the day when you look at the production and the the news that comes out of these showcases, they're not really worth that yeah. 20 minutes that we're all sitting there eagerly awaiting whatever announcements come out of it. I mean, they ended the showcase with Resident Evil VR or 4 VR. And it was like that, that, which was funny because they, for some reason, they um, premiered two different versions of it. One for PlayStation, because obviously it's being marketed as a PlayStation game. And then the other, which was just like a generic one, the PlayStation one, obviously didn't even include the the quest announcement so there were people who went out of that whole uh showcase without even knowing resident evil 4 vr was an announcement to begin with Mm -hmm. so it's just kind of sloppy you know yeah i feel like for for fans it's kind of like why did i dedicate (laughs) these minutes into you know a slotting time when i could have just waited for the trailers to drop themselves um but yeah i get it i get that they have to do this stuff for marketing but i feel like then the more often that these happen and it's not really groundbreaking news or enough news to get really the fan-based hype the less we'll tune in over time right um you know but then we're also gamers so we fall into these traps all the time where we'll be like we're not going to tune in and we here we are tuning in again because we just want to know what's going on um with our favorite franchises right Um, but i feel like even like the previous showcase we got we got some good bit of information about like the game the characters of the game but i feel like they could have just combined the two showcases into one and just have it as an event to look forward to and then release maybe the demo a little bit before then and a little bit after um so yeah it's a weird 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 way of doing things but i guess as we are in this kind of quarantine world um more studios are just trying to figure out ways to get people talking about them um and that's through these digital events 
True. I and I want to say too, right? Because we've had a lot of games canceled this year, and delayed or not canceled, but delayed, uh, mm-hmm. pushed back, and that's been happening throughout the entirety of the pandemic. And then one of the things that's been happening that really annoys me, and I know a lot of fans, uh, like gaming fans in general, don't like it, is when these companies uh, and, and producers and developers put on showcases to kind of mask that they delayed a game to show all this other stuff Mm. that they're doing to kind of push the delayed game to the side Mm -hmm. this is reassurance as well from for the resident evil fan base that hey this game isn't going to be delayed it's working it's functional this is what we have have faith in our product for what's going to be coming out because there is a lot of uncertainty with gaming fans nowadays of like is this game going to be good is it going to come out in a timely manner am i going to have to wait for patches for it to be fixed so this is a little bit more of that reassurance in addition to getting the marketing buzz you're absolutely right and then now i wonder you know, I feel like we're in a world where we don't get much demos often um, with sure, the yeah. big AAA titles. Is that something because of how kind of the state of the industry is and the lack to, lack of trust or confidence that we have with um, timelines with games coming out? As Malik mentioned, should we see more demos in the space? I think so. I yeah. think uh, I miss. I mean, th- this used to be a thing that was regular for games. A demo would pop up online with the PlayStation Marketplace, you downloaded, you get to try out your game. And then of course, through that beta started to become popular through like online games like Call of Duty, um, or like even even some fighting games got betas. Mortal Kombat in recent memory got a beta. Um, so like that's, uh, that's stuff that I think is very valuable because especially if a demo is put out uh, a decent time before the launch of the game, there is some initial feedback that can be provided by the general public who can get their hands on the game. You know, not just QA testers. QA testers are, of course, extremely valuable mm-hmm. to the games industry. But when you put the hands, when you put the game in the hands of like millions of people, they're going to be able to find more bugs than just an internal group of QA testers might be able to, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. so you can, or or just at least to have just in general feedback provided for what people would want in terms of quality of life fixes or whatever it may be for any game. So yeah, I think long overdue for the return of demos and stuff like that for single player games, even. I think, uh, you know, I quickly go back to Outriders, which just came out a a few weeks ago, and that game had a really comprehensive demo come out, and that kind of helped them gauge whether or not there would be a huge response. And I guess, yeah, it also got a huge boon from Xbox Game Pass, but at the same time, like, it helped them kind of look at the landscape and say, okay, are our servers going to be okay? I mean, they they clearly didn't know it was going to be that popular because <laughs> we all know what happened with that game. But that being said, like with online games, that's that's a huge help to yeah. release a demo, see how many people are coming in, how long yeah. they're sticking around for. So I, I think that there are a lot of advantages for having demos out, and I would love to see more of them. Yeah, and it seems more so too. Uh, it's come down to like this semantics of like a beta is kind of like what you have, what you're working on, just like a general like expected to be buggy. Demos yep. are like here's this refined slice of experience for you. Yeah. I don't know why I said slice of experience. That's such a weird phrasing, <laughs> but like it's this little refined little piece of the game that you get, so you know what their vision for the game is. Maybe that's not exactly what the game is right now, but that's their vision for the game. Because normally demos are usually pretty polished. And Mm -hmm. I personally, when I was younger, I would go in the store and I would get games that had demos already on the disc because that meant that I had something else to play too. And Mm -hmm. like you said, Steve, I had even messaged you and asked, did you play the Outriders demo? Like, what did you think of it? Um, Because I wasn't sure if I was going to hop in or not. So I think you're 100% correct. Yeah. And and then sometimes in really rare cases, you get the full game, like when Anthem did their beta. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not missing out on anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you get exactly like, what you were yep, promised. This is exactly. it. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to say something that I probably going to put me in a death stranding loop with uh, Caboose. I own three copies of Anthem. I own three Why? copies. I have You were one. keeping that game alive. <laughs> I was. I was like 30% of the player base. So listen, when I bought, when I bought my, my Risen 5, I got Division 2 and Anthem for free. I had already pre-ordered Anthem, and then I bought it on PS4 to play with my buddy, only for oh, him a week later man. to not like it. So... I gave, oh. I gave them way too much money for that game. I guess I kept it alive for as long as it did. But yeah. 
<laughs> you were well, single-handedly funding Anthem Next for a little while, Malik. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, we've got this guy. He loves the game so much. He yeah. has three copies. We got to do this. We, 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 <laughs> we can't, we can't, can't let him down. down. <laughs> we can't let him down. Oh, Damn. man. Uh, <laughs> That's... I, I hate to do this to you, Malik, but I feel like we're never gonna talk about Anthem again. I'm I'm sorry. You're Fine. it's you just kept it alive too much. I, yeah. Enough. I did too much. They need to just take the whole studio that was working on Anthem, sell that studio to Marvel, Iron Man. Boom. Done. That was the honestly best yes. That's the best flying mechanic yeah. I've ever felt in a game. That yeah. it felt so good. But the rest of it just. <laughs> we don't talk, we don't talk. But we, we don't talk about the rest of it. Um. <laughs>